Good afternoon. This is the Wall Street After Market Report, and also we're going to be bringing you a watch list for next week. Today's Sunday, October 7th, and we're going to carry on through October 8th. Hello, Vegas. How are you doing today? Oh, great. Thanks. I'm glad we're able to collaborate here. Talk yep. about Friday and Monday's list because we have a lot to cover, more than what we normally review. So I hope you guys that are listening, watching, following, have your pen and paper ready because you can't memorize everything that's talked about. All right. So, Jim, let's talk about our first one. We're going to talk about ALT. Well, ALT, you want me to go ahead and carry on here? Sure. So just to mention that this particular stock before you go ahead with the chart there, yep. uh, they did have a reverse split. And um, what happened is it brought the float from 43 million down to 1.4 million. So in my opinion, you know, that's actually, you know, I consider that like a micro float. So as a result, there's a lot of, um, activity happening on the stock as well so i'm just going to let jim talk about what's going on here with the stock well this was Further a, to the reverse split and now this little micro float going on this was a very interesting stock for us friday and i think a few people plus me learned some lessons on this trade come in friday and we had a big run on this this is a 20-day chart we had a big run on this thing a couple weeks ago all the way up to about 36 dollars due to the uh the, the float becoming into a low float stock. Well, here Friday, got a bunch of good news about investments. Somebody enclosed a stake about 9.9% into the company. So that really made the stock boost. Well, they did a repeat of that news. It really came to a broadcast right later in the afternoon and the stock just ran like a rock. But we called this in the room and this was a share rotated stock where, where volume over price took over and Vegas called this out and, and a few other people called this first thing out of the room and it ran all the way up bounced up to our target of 625 and I, I kind of called a resistance there and I got out of it and it dipped on down to my little target area that we had at 520 but the lesson that I learned on this trade Friday is to always pay attention to 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 a stock that really has a great a uh, great run out of it. I mean, it was a great stock from the beginning. It was one that I should have never took my eye off of. And I took put my eye back on it right there about an hour before it closed when that news popped out and the thing started really gathering some momentum. And then that's when I said, I'm back in this thing. And I took it and ran it up and sold it on my challenge account. And then I got back in it after hours because it kept kissing that 50 SMA. And we already knew by this time, this is uh, just it was going to take off so we're very bullish on this stock come Monday Vegas has a good target on it of 10 to 12 bucks which I think we'll see once it breaks 10 we want it to have a double top here of 945 to do that and I think that'll happen we're in a breakout flag right now in the after hour market is there anything else you'd like to say about that Vegas no I think that's pretty good um, so that, you know, people stay focused. If you're not in the trade, uh, just keep a watch on it. Jim's giving you guys some support and resistance on the chart. So we'll make note of that and, uh, stick to your trade plans. I'm looking to see, I'm hoping 10 to 12, but you know, um, anything can happen. So, uh, we shall see where this is going to go. Uh, come tomorrow morning. I expect for sure a gap up in the market, uh, tomorrow as well in the we, morning pre-market. Yeah, so... Don't be chasing this is all I can say. Yeah, we both have a position on this. And we will have our stop set just in case, but we're pretty we're pretty bullish on it. And the next one we're going to talk about is SAEX. Yeah, that is so interesting. I mean, they had the new Tolongo about the $100 million um, exploration, but uh, the stock ran, then pulled back, and then... Uh, people were you know bashing the stock and then um i mean i was i traded the stock personally and then on friday after hours um idaho joe 
uh, connected with me and I was actually in my car. <laughs> he messaged me and said, I got to talk to you about a really juicy stock. And I said, oh my God, right now? And uh, he's like, yes. I'm like, okay, I got to pull over. Hold on. So this is how much I actually love stocks. I actually pulled over so I could speak to him and he could tell me what's going on. So uh, he actually brought to my attention that after hours, there was two catalyst investors. One is White Box. They bought 54.83% uh, of the float. And also Blue Mountain bought 9.9% uh, stake of the company. So, you know, this is a little, this is also, you know, micro float. 1.75 million float is uh, what we see. And so a lot of people, when they saw the after hours uh, information on the catalyst, um, they thought, oh my gosh, I'm buying this. So um, got a few shares here on uh, SAEX. And Jim, I believe you got some too. Yeah, it got me a little bit. And uh, where can we see the action to come Monday on this stock? This is a very going to be very volatile run. Yeah, and we've had two very nice volatile runs on this thing in a 20-day period. So we're, we got down here at a very good low price after hours at, uh, when we were alerted to this, and we could have probably got it cheaper throughout the day because I did mention it pre right when the market opened. You know, I said we want to kind of put this on our watch list. Then when we got that confirmation kind of from one of our fellow day, friend, day trader friends, it made us say, okay, you know, if this guy likes it and I like it, it puts two and two one and one together and you come up with two brains there we've gone ahead and so we're in it right after hours this chart i think it's had a couple great bounces you know if it bounces like it did before i'm going to take my profit out of it but i think i might swing this for maybe all week this might be my, one of my plays of the week a week with alt so keep both of them on your watch list and then vegas we got another okay. one that you're real we're real interested this sector we oh, think it's yeah. We think it's we going to start turning. Part. Yeah, I think it, the sector is going to start turning around. So. Oh well, marijuana sector is going to start turning around. So yeah. one of the ones we've been watching, we've been talking about, is currently it's on OTC. It's the Aurora Cannabis, which is uh, currently uh, listed as ACBFF. Everyone knows that they're getting uplisted. They finally did file the Form 40F. Uh, they have confirmed the exchange, which is going to be the NYSE. We haven't confirmed yet what is the symbol that's going to be used on the exchange, and we don't even know the effective date of when they will be officially on the NYSE exchange. However, ACB is currently a ticker symbol that's available. So not surprised if that's going to be the one they pick uh, for the new ticker symbol when they're uplisted and when it's actually confirmed. So we should probably see some activity and hype on this stock because i think jim's going to talk about this but um obviously the marijuana sectors had a bit of a correction here and we should maybe see some stocks reversing um but i just want to comment quickly too on a l e a f it's another uh otc stock a leaf uh that one also recently has filed a 40 f that one also is going to get uplisted I don't know the date. I don't even know the exchange. Uh, when I have that information, I will share it. And we have two other ones, APHQF and CNTTF. Those are currently OTC as well. Marijuana plays. They have not filed a 40F. However, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. They probably will follow suit as well. Um, just when, we don't know. So I have these on watch. Um, and when they file, I will be happy to share it with you guys. Well, I just, and, I'm gonna, yeah. I just want to mention that ACBFF, um, it had a very nice little run right after, right before close at, at, at the market. It went all the way down here from where I had a 930 support, somewhere around 936, and ran all the way up to my resistance level of 989. So definitely there's some action going on with this. If you wanted to try to get in this, maybe on a pullback, we're bullish on it. Don't take me wrong. But uh, maybe, um, you know, in this area right around here, 970, 980. But I'd watch the price action on this and, and uh, 
but we're very bullish on the on that sector right now. Oh, and, yeah. we, and we, we also are. had yeah we also been talking about a leaf. You know, I've been watch I've had it on my watch list for a couple of weeks. So Vegas mentioned that keep that on there and then we got another one Vegas that kind of oh yeah mocks your name in a little bit today. Uh, my name in there. Yeah. So and Bev. As you guys know, National Beverage Company, um, they're currently in Vegas. They're already there. Uh, there is going to be the convenience store trade show, which Jim can show you there. Yep. Uh, it's being held at the Las Vegas Convention Center. There will be 24,000 uh, registered vendors. So this is huge. And uh, obviously, this is where all the convenience stores around the U.S. So maybe of other parts of the world they come to this uh venue it's held every year uh but they're i guarantee are going to be watching and going to these stations and show showcase uh companies that are going to be showcasing obviously cannabis infused beverages because at the end of the day it's money for those convenience stores especially they know that this is a hot market hot is hot so why would they not be placing orders to have these beverages in their store it's just a win-win situation so uh definitely jim loves the chart and jim's going to talk about that now because he really is bullish on this and i don't blame him yeah we've been bullish on this thing for a while we just kind of we just love the way this action on this stock's been here lately especially when it had that big run on the breakout that we called down there at about 150. We started watching this thing and then it ran all the way up to 10 bucks and pulled back and consolidated to a little bowl right here where they got a cup and label going on. See what I'm talking about? Cup and label? Oh, yeah. Yep. I see that. That's on a 20 day. So we're bullish on this thing. We're, we've got a nice little uh, flag pattern going on here yesterday for a breakout again. We think we can take it back up to 10 bucks. That's where going to be the hard resistance is. Your first one's going to be around 941, somewhere in that area. Play the pullbacks on this thing because it will happen. Not very big, but we're definitely bullish on this into the conference, and that runs until the 10th. So this is one you want to keep a uh, real good eye on. We're, we're hitting that, getting up to that resistance level, but this is a stock that we're very bullish on, and you can play this real simply. Absolutely. Easy and, money. Yep. Easy money. Oh, we're hopefully, <laughs> hopefully easy. Sometimes it's not easy. Yeah, and uh, remember, it's got that conference prepared. going on, and it's really going to get a lot of exposure in Vegas. And and another thing on this website is uh, Vegas means business, so don't forget that. Yeah, I mean business, you guys. When I to, you better be taking notes. Big time. I want to see those journals. I want to see people sending me pictures of their trade journal. We want you to don't be talk writing about these. trade journals down we, the road. Yeah, we want you to be writing these and add these to your watch list and, and see how they do and give us some feedback on them. But we got another one here we're going to talk about, Vegas. Yeah, which one? Ogen. Yeah, so Ogen was uh, a ritual trader on StockTwits, wanted to know about that one. Oh, he did. And uh, Jim said that uh, he's bullish to about uh, 180 yep. and seeing some good support there. So why don't you show the chart there and uh, talk about the pivot points and your thoughts on that one. Yeah, um, Ogen, I, I called this out in the room Friday. I called the little support right around 145. Well, it was 150, I said, was a pretty good little place to get in this thing. And you can see it hit that double bottom twice at 150. So we ran this all the way up to 180, and, that, and I didn't get out there. I got out a little bit sooner at around 172. But the thing pulled back, and this is what I liked about the action on it Friday. It pulled right back to that 155 support. So I'm creating a little channel on this. This is how I'm going to come out Monday watching this stock. I want to, I'm, I'm going to wait for the first 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to make, maybe see how it reacts. If it's in a breakout mode, I might chase it. But if not, I'll wait for, for the day to progress, and I'm going to try to find a channel plate on, on Ogun. So I'm, I'm semi-bullish on it. I'm not fully bullish on it. I'm playing it in a channel. And it's one to keep on your watch list because, you know, I've been watching this for uh, – Oh, I mean, look at here. I've been watching it for almost 20 days. I, we called this when it was a buck. And I think it was mentioned earlier in the room when it was down there at 60 cents. So, I mean, you, it, it, what I'm trying to say is I used to be 
very bearish on this because I knew it was an easy one to go up and come back down. But I think it's been strong and showing strength right now. It's more so it's it, you know I take it out of that category and put it into the semi bull under bull factor. And I want to play the dips on it. And if thing gets down to about 130, that's 127. That's really that's a real solid support. And that's on Oaken. So just keep, Oaken. yeah, just okay. put the caution flag on it, but also put a little bowl on it too. That's the way I feel about it. Yeah, but well, I agree with you. So, I mean, you know, you guys just keep watching it, and if you're not in it, I mean, you have the resistance and supports there, so you just got to play the channel, right? Yep. yep. And then, yeah, and we'll, and I'm, I'll post the chart every once in a while on stock twits and and on the, so people can see where it, where it's looking at. Oh, okay. that's great. People find it helpful. Yep. So, uh, another viewer from StockTwits, um, Mr. or maybe it's Mrs. Uh, G11111 uh, wants to know about BPTH. Oh, yeah. I got that chart oh. right here. <laughs> yeah, that one. Let me tell you about that one. So, that one there, first of all, I noticed for a fact that there was a lot of volume um, over the last two days. So I'm referring to um, Thursday, over 4.5 million, and also on Friday, 1.929 million. So, you know, big volume surge going on there. Uh, part of the reason I think too um, is that, you know, there is it's going to be some interest on the stock, I think, when it gets to like 70 cents because there's also a gap to fill. And, um, you know, so people could be, let's say, buying the stock as well, waiting for that to eventually happen. And so they're trying to buy the stock at a cheaper price because, you know, they don't mind swing trading this, looking for a potential gap fill. And uh, the stock previously did it have? Uh, I think we discussed it have an offering. Yeah, it stock? had a closing. It had a closing it of the public. It closed the offering. Yeah, of one point five million on the twenty fifth of, of, of uh, September. September. Okay, so yeah. there we go. So now that the offering's closed, uh, that's good. And so you know, I'm noticing the selling has dried up as well. Yep. So uh, keep it on your watch list. I mean, for day traders, I you know. 70 cents is where I would like to see it. If you like to swing trade, you know, you can get in wherever you want uh, under the 70 cents because your goal is to hold it and wait for that move over 70. So if it does eventually go to 70 cents and breaks, I'd like to see this go to about 94. And then if it breaks that, you know, potential of a dollar, a dollar 10. And, and Jim and I looked at the chart and uh, we were on the same page on that. Yeah. And, and it also, you know, it's a, pretty good decent float it's got a small float on it not a real small one but an average decent float of under 13 million so you know that that kind of is is good in play and the and we're down here at the bottom too on this thing and the offering's been closed so it could pull back to the low support of around 56 if you're not in it yet but we're sitting here at close right now at 59 so i'm definitely going to have this on watch i think if it like vegas said if it breaks that 70 and i can see even hitting at 72 now that i fine tune it and i see that base of that candle up there that i'm posting see what i'm looking at that's how i yeah, would call I a that. resistance on a chart so maybe around 72 we could adjust that up just a couple of pennies for that breakout because we're going to break at 70 so let's let's count 72 and we're going to keep this definitely on watch because it was brought to our attention and, and i like it now that it has the uh, closing of the public offering. And then we're going to just kind of make a little shout out at J.C. Penney's. There's a lot of insider yeah. buying going on that around this range here. at the. Yeah, Jim's just showing you guys the block trades right now. But what you guys to notice is not just the position size, but look at how much money is going into the stock. So yeah. if you were actually, let's say, to look at the weekly chart, I mean, the weekly chart's really crappy. But you know what? They don't care because remember, our new CEO has uh, a 30 year veteran in the retail sector. Oh, she, and you uh... know, she was just hired. She starts her job uh, not this week, but next week. So she's taken the reins of JCPenney starting next week. And she's going to turn that company around, or that's the hope 
uh, that Wall Street has. So this is why these uh, big fat cats, they're taking advantage of the stock tanking right now or that it's at this low. They don't care. They're like, you know what? We know that this stock's going to probably turn around. That's what they feel. That's the sentiment right. that they have. Uh, and yep. this is why, personally for me, I'm in a swing trade on the stock too because I want to see what happens at the next earnings report. So, like I said, this could be a, a nice little story of the of the comeback of J.C. Penny. Yeah, I'm very bullish on this stock right now, especially at this price, 162. And I'm not just saying that because I felt like that when Apron was at two bucks and we took 100 percent on it. And I'm feeling the same way about J.C. Penney's right now. We're at a bottom, and look at this year chart. I mean, it's just screaming, screaming by me, and especially yeah. uh, that we're going into the Christmas season. And I'm real confident in the CEO that that has been hired to take and turn this company around. And it, and I'm glad that she's a female for one. And I think. You know, I think that'll make a big difference on, on, on how she merchandises and how she markets J.C. Penney's. So we're both bullish on it. Vegas has got a position in it, and I'm going to pick me up a position and hold it for a swing. I'm not going to yeah, flip it. So it's going to be a you know, swing. If, you guys, if, if there's people out there that honestly you like stress-free trades or you are looking for something to hold longer term, uh, this might be one that you want to do your own due diligence on. Uh you know, you do your own due diligence. We're just sharing what we have checked ourselves and you decide if it's something for you. Um, also with swing trades, you know, you don't have to buy a full position. I mean, maybe you're interested in buying a thousand shares. Well, maybe you won't buy a thousand right away. You'll start with a couple hundred and maybe as it starts to move and go the direction that you like, um, you can add on the way up. So yeah, yeah. you don't have to go full size. You could take a starter and then see how this plays out. Okay. So just, you know, keep that in mind um, when you're looking to take something longer term like JC Penny. And if you guys are channel players, I mean, this could, well, could be even be a good little channel. If it picks up the volume, you could play it. I'm, I'm going to take it. I think it's going to go above two bucks easily. And then that's where I'm going to reconsider, you know, right around this area, 197. I want to get up that $2 area by by soon so that's jc pennies and we got one more on the list vegas that you really want to talk about yeah so i just want to bring to your attention because you guys got to just put this on your watch list if you're not in the trade so i was watching the volume on edge edge therapeutics and i gotta say the volume is what piqued my interest and uh thank you to paula who brought this to my attention yep um so edge had some serious volume, like over 620% uh, during the day from what it normally has uh, a lot, you know, from the day before is what we were comparing it to. And uh, we decided that, you know what, some good activity here on edge. Uh, I looked at the stock and it looks to me like definitely there was a volume surge for sure. But what I really liked is that there was a nice pocket pivot um on this on the chart and i also like to see that this looks like there'll be an expansion breakout so um this company uh you know i don't know what's going on there but um definitely oh. if you're not in the trade i would like to go in it at over the high of day from friday which was 117 so it need to break that in order to consider taking the trade i'm already in the trade um i was hoping that it would have gone over that and it actually pulled back but i didn't sell because the volume is what kept me in the trade um also you know the company from the last time they had a press release they did have a press release um back in august first and they you know they talked about their expenses and their cash flow they still have cash so they're they're fine they did some restructuring to kind of eliminate expenses as well uh, but remember they did mention that um, back in April, end of April, that they were doing a comprehensive review of strategic alternatives to focus on maximizing stockholder value. So that would be people like us. And maybe that's being looked into, uh, it's being explored, maybe being evaluated, maybe there'll be a future acquisition, a merger, who knows? There's definitely no timeline for this. There's not even a guarantee that that's what's going to even happen. Um, they're just saying that if it's pursued, 
they will disclose it only once the board has approved a specific action and they feel that they need to obviously disclose it to shareholders as required by law. So, you know, who knows what's really going on behind the scenes on this stock, but let me tell you, I'm liking it. Very good. Well, I posted that little briefing that she was talking about there on Edge, and I wanted to explain something about Edge. It's got a bullish ascending wedge on it for the last one, two, three, six days. So this mm -hmm. thing's have very weekly chart. It's a very beautiful chart. It's consolidation, say, consolidating well and pulling back to that bottom support level of that wedge. Also, we broke out of that wedge Friday real well and held position, and it kind of came back and found support. Then at the end of the day, bounced back up. So keep wedge on your watch list. I'm going to look at the one-year chart real fast here. You see this big gap? We're talking about a big gap here. And it might have had something, I don't know, but that was last year, so it might take some research. But, but um we're definitely going to be bullish on edge. I'm, I'm liking it. I think it's starting to recover, but there's a big, huge gap play that needs to be filled on this stock. <laughs> and Vegas said it's really huge. And, uh, oh, I know that that's, you know, that also intrigues me, but I don't, I don't want to get too excited about <laughs> the huge gap fill, but let me tell you, the volume piqued my interest. And, yep. um, you know, Paula said, look at this. And I'm like, Holy crap. I really like it. And I was liking it actually, when I actually looked at the weekly chart, I mean, I like that too. So, I mean, this chart is beautiful. The weekly yeah. chart's just beautiful. So, it might put you on the edge of your seat if you keep it on your watch list. Yeah, I mean, you guys should look at the weekly yourselves. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So, uh, that's what you call textbook chart, man. That's just beautiful. Yep. So, I love it. So, I now, it. I guess this is going to be the closing of the. Uh, of the Wall Street update after market report, including a watch list for next week for October 8th. And I yeah, want everybody. Which is, which is tomorrow, Jim. Next week's tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> all next week. And I'm, I'm going to try to. There's a couple good plays of the week on here. Keep in mind Alt and SAEX and all those honorable mentions below. In Bev, uh, Ogen, we're going to have Edge. I mean, there's some good plays on here. And I'm going to yeah. be posting this video on my personal uh video page and i want everybody to follow i love stocks i have a link posted below it i want you subscribed to i love stocks link and vegas what anything else you'd like to say no i just want to thank everyone i have to say that uh, overwhelming uh connections with people i've had people uh direct messaging me um you know on various social media platforms and uh, i'm just flattered that uh they're very enjoying the commentary from the videos they said that um they find it very engaging uh because sometimes they just look at a chart and that's all they look at <clears throat> they're not looking at the big picture uh which is where i kind of like to come into play and try to explain things to everyone because i want you to understand why the movement why the action um it can't just be oh what's going on is there news is there news it's sometimes there's just you got to look beyond the news you got to look at all the different factors so um you guys know i love researching so I want to thank you all for sharing some stocks um, that Jim and I love because we love stocks and I know so do you. So um, please continue to uh, share ideas. Uh, please follow, please subscribe, please like, and uh, we're here at the end of the day to help everyone. And um, if you have suggestions, feel free to send them our way. We are very open, laid back and open and receptive to what you're looking for. So yep. thank you, everyone. Have an amazing Sunday and study and be ready to take profits on Monday. Yep. And like she said, we appreciate you all. And, and our Sunday updates are going to be a little bit more lengthier, maybe than our regular aftermarket updates on the weekdays because we have more we want to talk about. So we do appreciate you. I love stocks. Vegas loves stocks. And we all love stocks. Keep it fresh keep it simple and keep it clean and have a great week coming up this week